Hello, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, good people. My name is Manuel from YouTube Best. Today we'll be reading you a news from Kanu. The Emea Sanusi of Kanu State has been finally dethroned. We also have information that are leading to his dethronement and also we'll be associating it to our previous news. We read you about his statements. Okay. Before we get into that, please find it in your heart to click on the subscription button if you have not done that yet. Also, remember to ring the bell to enable us to send you updates each time we make one. Thank you and enjoy the rest of the news. News headline. Emea Sanusi Mohamedou too has been dethroned by the Kano state government. The decision was made at the state council executive meeting on Monday, March 9th. The meeting was presided over by Governor Abdullahi Omar Ganduje. The Kanu state government on Monday, March 9th, finally dethroned a mayor of Kanu, Mohamedou Sanusi II, who was being under much heat throughout the Emirates crisis rocking the state. Sanusi dethronement came after the state council executive meeting presided over by the Governor Abdullahi Omar Ganduje. Confirming the development, Alhaji Usman Alhaji, Kanu Secretary to the state government, said that the monarch's sacks takes effect from Monday. Usman said that the Emea's action violated the Part 3, Section A to E of Kanu state law and that his removal was decision reached after a lot of consideration with all relative stakeholders. Calling on Kanu people to remain calm over the development, the SSG said that a replacement will be made in due time and made known to the public. Earlier, Legit.ng reported that the immediate past representative of Kaduna Central at the Senate, Sahun Sani, had pleaded with Ganduje to tread soft in his dealing with Sanusi. Legit.ng also gathered that the former lawmaker asked the governor to forgive Emea Sanusi of any wrongdoing. Sani, in a tweet on Friday, March 6th, via his verified Twitter account, urged the governor Ganduje to forgive, forget, and move on, letting the emir be. He reminded the governor that power is transcendent, and as such, he may need the emir someday. The emir was facing a fresh probe by Kano State Public Complaint and Anti-Corruption Commission over alleged 2.2 billion land scam. The first class traditional ruler who was expected to appear before the commissioner's team of investigators on Thursday, March 5th, didn't appear, requesting for another day. The commission, however, insisted on Friday, March 6th, that the MAR must appear before it for questioning on Monday, March 9th. The governor have been on a log ahead with the MAR Sanusi, and many see the fresh proof as a continuation of the initial crisis that led to the creation of an additional four new emirates in that state. And here are the evident reasons why Emea Sanusi of Kanu Emeritus was removed. The body reads, For many Nigerians, the development was not surprising at all. The Kanu state governor has been in an endless battle with the dethroned monarch for months. The genesis of the battle which had defied all reconciliation attempts could be traced to the 2019 general election. However, let us first understand the real reason Governor Bandu attached himself to Sanusi's removal, according to a press release put out by the Secretary to the State Governor, SSG Alhaji Usman Alhaji. According to the statement by the SSG, Emea Sanusi was dethroned for disrespecting lawful instructions from the office of the state governor and other lawful authorities. One of such alleged disrespectful acts by Sanusi was his alleged consistent refusal to attend official meetings and programs organized by the state government. The state government also accused Sanusi of insubordination for allegedly refusing to attend the so-called official meeting without any lawful justification. In addition, the Gwandu-led government sent Emea Sanusi has repeatedly breached Part 3, Section 13, A to E of the Kano State Emirates Law 2019. Here is the press release, and I read, 
The Kano State Executive Council, under the chairmanship of His Excellency Governor of Kano State, Dr. Abdullahi Umar Gandu, OFR, has unanimously approved the immediate removal stroke detriment of the Emir of Kano, Emirates, Mohammed Sanusi II. The Emir of Kano is in total disrespect to lawful instructions from the Office of the State Governor and other lawful authorities including his persistent refusal to attend official meetings and programs organized by the government without any lawful justification, which amount to total insubordination. It is in record and so many instances Mala Mohammed Sanusi II has been found breaching Part 3 Section 3 A to E of the Kano State Emirate Law 2019, and which if left unchecked will destroy the good and established image of Kano Emirates. This removal is made after due consultation with the relevant stakeholders and in compliance with Part 3, Section 13 of Kano State Emirate Law 2019 and other reasons stated above. The removal was reached in order to safeguard the sanctity, culture, tradition, religion, and prestige of Kano Emirates built over a thousand years. His Excellency Dr. Abdullahi Umar Gandu, OFR, call on the general public to remain calm, law-abiding and to go about their normal businesses, while a new emir of Kanu Emirates will soon be appointed. Thank you, signed Alaji Usman Alaji, Secretary to the State Government, 9th March 2020. Okay, now, the State Government said if it does not check the action of the dethroned emir, the good and established image of Kanu Emirates will be destroyed. I agree with that. But why is it that the statement does not indicate the provision of Part 3, Section 13, A to E of Kano State Emirate Law, 2019? I think there is a strong suggestion that it has to do with the alleged violation of the culture and tradition of the state because the state government said in the latter part of this statement that Sanusi removal was to safeguard sanctity, culture, tradition, religion, and prestige of Kano Emirates builded over a thousand years. Okay, so let's continue. Also, on Wednesday, March 4th, the Kano State House of Assembly, led by Speaker Abdulazizi Gaba Gafasa, has announced its decision to probe Sanusi over alleged violation of culture and tradition of the state. According to the state legislature, the decision to probe Sanusi was taken after two petitions were brought before them against the person of the monarch. The petitioners accused the traditional monarch of making public utterances which contradicted the state's conservative norms and culture, adding that the gross was backed by a video CD evidence. While the probe committee was asked to submit the report of its finding in seven days' time, it is not yet clear whether it is the finding that formed part of the reasons Governor Bandu finally dethroned Emir Sanusi. However, legit.ng reports how the alleged plan to submit a report recommending the removal of Emir Sanusi is said to have resulted in a fight in the Kano State House of Assembly on Monday, February 9th. As earlier noted, the crisis between Governor Bandu and Emir Sanusi dated back to 2019. In the earlier part of last year, the Kano State Governor signed into law a bill creating four new emirates in the state. Political pundits claim the move was to reduce the influence of Emir Sanusi. Also, the state anti-corruption agency of the government reopened an investigation into the finances of the Kano Emirates Council, the body overseeing the state traditional institution headed by Emir Sanusi. On May 19, 2019, the Daily Trust reopened that anonymous sources Familiar with the matter said, Bandu actions were linked with the Emir's alleged display of open partnership during the 2019 general election. One of the sources reportedly claimed Emir Sanusi also directed district heads in the state not only to vote for the PDP in their respective domain, but also to ensure that the ruling APC was defeated in the general election. The officials said, that this alleged activity by Sanusi got Governor Bandu very angry and led to the alleged plot to remove him. Before the eventual dethronement, there have been many failed attempts to resolve the crisis. The committee, headed by Nigeria former military head of state, General Abdul Salami Abubakar, 
was set up to intervene and put an end to the lingering crisis between Kano State Governor and the Emir. But like other previous efforts, it also failed. Emir Sanusi ascended the throne on June 8, 2014, following the death of Al Haji Addo Bayero, who reigned from 1963 till his death in 2014. Since the beginning of the reign of Emir Sanusi, the Kanu monarch has consistently criticized the perceived ill, poverty, poor leadership, lack of education, etc., in the north, which usually unsettled the northern elites. Just recently, the dethroned Emir warned the north would destroy itself if it does not change its current status and address the challenges of poverty, millions of out of school children, malnutrition, drug abuse, and Boko Haram insurgency. He said that no recent leader of the North can afford to be happy in the face of multitude of challenges confronting the region. If you want to read the news about this, we will provide a link in the description below. So let's continue. He stated this in Kaduna on Monday, February 17th, at an event making the 60th birthday of Governor Nasser Ahmed Erufai. However, at the time of filing this report, the dethroned emir of Kanu is yet to react to his dethronement. That is it with the news. What do you think? As for me, I think like the tweet I read and it says, History has repeated itself. In 1963, Emir Sa Mohamedou Sanusi I was dethroned as a result of power struggle between him and Amadou Belu. 57 years later, his son, Emir Sanusi Mohamed Sanusi II, is also dethroned by Governor Bandu for the same power struggle. We read you in our previous news about the Emir on his warning to the North to desist from some activities that will destroy them. These statements, we are fearless, as though he don't care if he's dethroned or not. And I mentioned that this statement could lead to his dethronement because I know what Nigeria is about. There is always a prize in Nigeria for saying the truth. And coming to the side of Gwandu, was it actually the constitutional problem with Sanusi that led to his dethronement? Yes, someone must always pay the price for saying the truth. But for me, I don't think it is the personal or constitutional problem between Gwandu and Sanusi that led to this. Because if it's a personal issue, they had it long ago. The loggerhead have been there since this guy got into seat as the Emir of Kanu. And if you're talking about constitutional, it is not today based on the statement we read earlier that Sanusi started disobeying, uh, attending meetings, and so on. So I believe that there is a supreme authority behind this issue. So what do you think? Drop your suggestion in the comment section below as we review it. Remember to like, remember to share. Once again, this is Manuel from YouTube Best signing off.